Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for coming to join um, our session for OBGYN. Um, I would like to thank Dr. Devia to, for joining us today. Um, it's a pleasure to be meeting you. Thank you for coming. Um, um, sorry, I'm the pro sorry. <laughs> Um, I would like to ask Ms. Devia to introduce herself, if you can unmute. Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Divya Punita. I am a gynecologist and an obstetrician. Good evening. Can we all start? Yeah, it's very nice okay, to see so, you. Okay, so we are starting the shadowing sessions of OBGY. So I would like to introduce you what is obstetrics and gynecology. It is a diversified specialty concerned with the delivery of medical and surgical care to women. This field combines two specialities, obstetrics, which focuses on the care of women before, during, and after childbirth, and gynecology, which involves the diagnosis and treatment of disorders of the female reproductive system and breasts and associated disorders. The relationship with patients are long-term and are often maintained through post-menopausal stage of patient's life. Obstetrics and gynecologists often serve as consultants to other physicians. In many cases, OBGYNs in the primary care physician with whom female patients have regular contact and obtain medical advice and counseling. I have a two and a half month baby, so please excuse me if there's, excuse the background noise. So as we go ahead, what is the difference between OBS and gynecology? Obstetrician's main task is to diagnose and Diagnose and bring a woman through pregnancy, deliver her child, and give the mother adequate postnatal care. The most important surgical operation performed by obstetricians is cesarean section. Episiotomy and surgical procedure in which an incision is used to enlarge the vaginal opening to facilitate childbirth is also common. Gynecologists make routine examinations of the cervical and vaginal secretions to detect cancer of the uterus and cervix. They perform two main types of surgical operations, repairing any significant injuries caused to the vagina, uterus, and bladder in the course of childbirth, and removing cysts and benign or malignant tumors from the uterus, cervix, and ovaries. The modern practice of gynecology requires skill in the pelvic surgery, a knowledge of female urological conditions, because the symptoms of the disease of the urinary tract and genital tract are often similar. The skill in dealing with the minor psychiatric problems that often arise among gynecological patients. They also deal with all the dysfunctional uterine bleeding and other gynecological problems.
so what are the skills and qualities required a gynecologist should be energetic and enthusiastic empathetic and sensitive should have good coping skills should avoid letting stress and challenges get in the way of providing excellent care should enjoy the being in the operating room or the office they should be problem solvers they should be they should have strong interpersonal skills to work as a team and to communicate effectively and easily with patients quick thinking for making adjustment to plans and decision making also physical dexterity the ability to adapt to different environments quickly whether at the office and then running to the operating room it is a very challenging task which requires a lot of thinking and decision making and challenges your physical abilities too what are the criteria for being an obgyn for the education part you should have a bachelor's degree in the medical school and after that you should have residency training of 3 years and a sub specialty of fellowship if desired so you should be properly licensed and have a certification of your specific country and state so here is what a typical day of a obgyn looks like wake up at 5 and watch news shower make coffee walk the dog for 30 minutes or so then leave for work when i leave for work at 7:30 am i sign in and i ask for all the high risk patients and uh, all the patients delivered at night and the uh, preterm patients in labor and also the gynex patients who are who have bleeding so everything has been uh, informed to me by the doctor who was on duty a night before i entered at 8 am all the labor and delivery physicians nurses resident students to another sign out or huddle we do this every 3 hours so that we know what's going on on all of the patients sometimes you are called to the emergency room when a patient is not yours so it is better to know a little about the patients this sign out can take 30 minutes to 1 and a half hours at 8:30 am we start the scheduled procedure such as cesarean sections external cephalic virgins circulages or tubal ligations or total abdominal hysterectomy the other and other gynecological and obstetric procedures at 8:30 am to 5 pm Uh, sorry 5 am we manage the labor process going on all the women in labor deliver babies vaginally perform c sections see patients in the obg emergency room consult the main emergency room and possibly doing emergent surgeries we typically eat breakfast lunch and together and we don't have a very specific time for that and dinner is a collective group effort and it usually takes out delivery that attending by is for the team uh, around 11 pm to 2 am i try to catch up some sleep and uh, which is all, often disrupted by uh, the calls in the call room and or the resident in the work room at 5 am we do our last huddle of the shift and then start morning rounds on all our patients this can take up to 1 to 2 hours to see all our patients and write note of all the patients at 7:30 am i give my report to the oncoming doctor and i am done for the day at 9 am i arrive at home take shower and take some rest and start my other day this is a picture of my residency life in which uh, there is my whole obgy team Uh, including of the head of the department the professors the senior residents as well as the junior residents as well as the lecturers this is a picture of the covid 19 times when we worked night and day with delivering covid positive patients and uh, providing service to all the women and mankind women in obgyn there is a good scope for women in obgyn as women have a lot of trust and faith 
and can relate, empathize and understand with other women, the problems, the complications, or the emotional stress they are going through. We develop a doctor-patient trust relationship with the women. They are women who have several antenatal visits from the first day of conception with the positive pregnancy test till the time of delivery. So we'll build up a good trust with our patients and reg uh, regularly monitor their fetal heart, fetal movements and the growth of, of their pregnancy. If there are any complications or if there are any alert signs, we inform them and make sure that we have a healthy mother and a healthy baby. This is just an example of a case study. A 32 year old G1 or a primary gravida calls her midwife for a checkup because she has a severe headache. Her blood pressure is 34, 343 by 40 and has no problems up to now. She is usually fit and well with no significant medical history. On examination, she looks well and is moving comfortably around the house. The GCS is 15 by 15, oriented in a time, place and person. The abdominal examination is unremarkable and what are the further investigation we would like to do? Her heart rate is 104, her BP is 153 by 98, temperature is normal. Urine glucose is 1 and protein urea is 2 plus. What are the conditions we are worried about, worried about and where should she? So this is preeclampsia as her BP, blood pressure is 153 by 19. Preeclampsia is a condition where there is pregnancy-induced hypertension. Also, there is associated protein urea. There can be also signs of edema. When there's severe preeclampsia, her systolic is more than 160 and diastolic is more than 100. There are symptoms, abnormal bleedings, headache. And if she has eclampsia, then she will have convulsions and a background of preeclampsia. This was just an example of a high-risk case that, that we uh, normally uh, occurred, that occurs day to day in our day-to-day -day lives. There are other complications like placental abruption, bleeding, decreased fetal movements, for which we have to rush to the OR. Apart from all the stress and all, all the physical and mentally challenging days, each day is a bundle of joy because we deliver safe motherhood and safe babies. Happy babies. It's all possible with teamwork. This is a picture of my first day of medical school when I was so enthusiastic, so excited to join my first day and my journey to become a health professional. I love solving problems and also like structure. OBGYN provides a good combination of following a plan that has been laid out, but also going with flow when unexpected things arise. I love helping other people and being an OBGYN gives you the opportunity to help not only women, but babies as well. As we all love babies, I think that coaching women before, during and after pregnancy, as well as working to keep the mothers healthy is an incredibly rewarding and interesting job. I know that having a baby or just going to a gynecologist can be nerve wracking. So we make people feel comfortable and prepared, give them good advice and that they will value and follow. I have always wanted to be a doctor as long as I can. This was the last day of my med medical school and training. And as you can see, we were very enthusiastic to step into this world and provide services to the people. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Divya. That was amazing. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I'm open for any questions. We will also put this video on YouTube and we'll allow the participants to send maybe DMs on Instagram if that's fine with you. Yeah, that's okay. good. Yeah. We'll let them know as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much.